Hi, I'm Julia, a reference and instruction librarian at Eastern Gateway Community College. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the craft test. In a different video, I discussed the criteria of the craft test. I'm going to briefly review these now before we dive into the live demo. The CRAP test provides criteria to evaluate information for quality, credibility, and usefulness. CRAP is an acronym which stands for Currency, Relevance, Authority, Accuracy, and Purpose. If you need to review what these criteria mean, please watch our video called What is the CRAP test? There's a link to that video in this video's description. Before we begin the live demo, let's imagine we're in an English class and we are asked to write a research paper about a topic of our choice. We decide to write a paper on the topic of remote work. Our instructor says we are allowed to use sources from the internet, but they must be credible and reliable. After some searching online, we find two web sources on the topic of remote working and teleworking. Now let's use the CRAP test to evaluate these sources. We're going to start with this article on Forbes.com. Let's begin with currency. When was this article published? So it looks like it was published November 30th, 2021, which was less than a month ago. So it does pass the currency test. And let's move on to relevance now. So does this relate to our topic of remote work and telework? In the title, we see that it does relate to remote work, specifically remote work culture, so it does appear to be relevant. Authorities next. So who is the author of this content? For news articles, that's usually right under the title, and it looks like we don't have an author's name in this case. We have square contributor, brand contributor. We also see this article as part of a paid program. So if we click on Square Contributor, looks like we're taken to a page where we see all the articles that a company Square Inc. has contributed to Forbes. Let's go back. So since we don't have an author's name here, this is a big red flag. Uh, we really can't look up if they're qualified to write about this topic. And it's clear the company has paid to have this content published. This is an example of what's called sponsored content. It's when a company pays a fee to be able to publish content in a publication. So this information does not pass our test for authority. We're still going to go over the last two criteria, though, for the sake of practice. So let's evaluate for accuracy next. Is this information supported by evidence? And does it link to reputable references? So let's look at some of these links here. You can see we are taken to Square's business website, and that's not a scholarly or reputable reference source. In general, just skimming through, the language seems pretty biased towards Square's products. They're promoting Square Payroll and the Square App Marketplace. So overall, this is not accurate, credible information. Let's finally examine purpose. To me, it seems clear this article is meant to promote Square's products and services and to get people to click on links leading to Square's business website. Uh, the URL of the source is also a .com, which shows us this is a commercial website. And commercial websites are motivated to make money by selling products or by getting users to click on links or advertisements. We also see there are a lot of ads for Square around this page. So overall, we found that this website does not pass the CRAP test. Next, we're going to look at the government website, telework.gov. Let's start with currency. We can see here that this digital telework guide has been updated to replace the guide published in 2011. So if we click on this link to the PDF here, we see that this is a 2021 guide, meaning it was published in 2021, and therefore this information does pass the currency test. Let's move on to relevance. Does this information relate to our research topic of remote work and telework? 
Since this is a guide to telework and remote work in the federal government, we do see that this is relevant to us. Let's look also in our table of contents. So we can see there's a definition of telework, some key terms, uh, telework arrangements. So there's lots of relevant information to our topic here. Authority is next. So let's go back to the top of our guide. You can see it was published by the United States Office of Personnel Management. Let's dig into this office a little bit and find out some information about it. We're gonna to go to the official website of the Office of Personnel Management, go to the About page. So we can tell first off that this is an official government office because the site ends in .gov and .gov sites are restricted to only official federal government entities. And reading here, it appears that it's an official government office related to human resources, managing workers, etc. So we can assume that this office is knowledgeable about work models like teleworking. Therefore, this passes the authority test. So let's return to our guide and look at accuracy next. So is this information supported by evidence? Does it link to other reputable sources of information? So getting into the guide itself, we can see that it's linking to sites like congress.gov, another reputable government website. We also see it's linking to govinfo.gov, which if we remove the end of that, we can see that this is the site of the US government publishing office. So this is another reputable source it, it is linking to. So overall, it appears to be linking to expert resources. The language itself also appears objective and informative. It's not trying to sell us something. So I'd say that this definitely passes the accuracy test. Finally, let's look at the purpose of the information. So we're gonna scroll back to the top where it says how to use this guide. So it appears from this section that the purpose of the guide is to inform the audience about teleworking and remote work in the government. So the authors here are very clear about the purpose and about what the different parts are composed of. It covers telework arrangements, laws, guidance, review of implications, considerations, and strategies for remote work. So overall, we do see that this government guide and this government website do pass the CRAP test. If you have any questions about how to use the CRAP test or about evaluating information in general, please reach out to us via email or chat live with a librarian on the EGCC Library website. Thank you for watching.